Hey guys, a few weeks ago my wife bought this beautiful Ninja ZX6R and she has had a great time riding it so far. Today I get to take it for a spin and give you a full owner's review of the 2020 Kawasaki Ninja ZX6R. Stick around. Okay, so since this is going to be a fairly long video, I want to go ahead and get right into it. This video is going to be broken down into three parts, which I will try to break down in the uh, description below. Uh, but we're going to have a little montage so you can get a high quality view of the bike. Um, we're going to do a walk around of the bike so I can talk about some of its major features and the pros and cons of those. And then finally, I'm going to get on the bike, take it for a spin and give you my thoughts on how it rides, how it performs, and how it feels. So, with that said, let's get into the montage. Alright guys, so here is the 2020 Kawasaki Ninja ZX6R. This is the candy steel furnace orange color. An amazingly nonsensical name, but uh, anyway, it's, uh, it's orange and black. And we really like the color. My wife really loves uh, the color scheme. So let's get to some of the features of this bike. Um, you know, of course it is a 636cc digitally fuel injected inline four cylinder. Um, it's very powerful. It's uh, slightly more powerful in the speed department than the Ninja 1000, um, which I find notable, but it is a super sport. It is designed to go fast. Regardless though, <clears throat> they're pretty equal in terms of get up and go. Um, last year, 2019 is when they went with this design and they uh, I believe they changed the front sprocket so that it has a little more low end torque. It does get off the line pretty quickly. I don't know if it's as fast as the Ninja 1000 off the line but it's pretty quick. Um, but on the top end once you get over 8000 RPMs it's not even close. You get a much higher revving motor in this uh, package. I think uh, we should probably talk a little bit about price. Um, we got this for around 10 2 and I think I paid right around 12 for my Ninja 1000. You know it's a couple thousand dollars less expensive. I think it's probably the cheapest in its class. This is the ABS version. You could get the non-ABS version for under 10,000 easily. So we were really happy with the price. I think it offers the best value in this class of bike so you know take it for what it's worth guys but um, there's not a lot of bikes there's not a lot of 600s that you can get that this cost that are brand new so let's go over some of the mods that we've done um, you'll notice right here we have the graves exhaust i put the video up on a card the exhaust that used to be here you know used to attach right there 
It was huge, it weighed a ton, it sounded like garbage in my opinion for this nice bike, it really ought to have a sound to match. Um, this Graves exhaust sounds a lot better, it looks a lot better, it saves at least 10 pounds off the bike. Over here is the Shogun frame sliders, which unfortunately we've <laughs> We've gotten to see them in action because we tipped over the bike in the driveway accidentally, but these saved it. Uh, no damage as a result, and I credit these frame sliders being on to kind of help that. It was just an accident, so no big deal. Okay, let's talk about the wheels real quick. These are 17-inch wheels. You've got uh, 120 70s up front, which is pretty standard fare on most sport bikes these days. But in the back is where everything changes. That is a... Uh, 180 55 on the back which is a pretty wide tire no big deal I think it looks cool um, should give you a little more surface area for traction when you're running through the corners um, I think it matches the bike really nice and looks pretty good in the back here we have the moto dynamic tail light which has integrated signals um, that allowed us to take the stock signals off and really cleaned up the rear end and then below that you've got the moto dynamic tail uh, fender eliminator kit which eliminates that big huge fender that's that's right here which is just gross and pretty much everybody takes those off when they get the bike that was uh, I had already ordered it before we even picked up the bike that's how important that is to me but um, just a note that this uh, is not stock and that's what the rear end of the bike looks like now this pillion back here it rattles quite a bit and it's loose and that is to me a design flaw so I think it looks really good I love the embossed ninja on there I think it it looks nice but for whatever reason this is just a kind of loose and when you hit a good bump it rattles so something to note if you're looking at this bike um, I'm not sure if it's just ours or if they just all come like that I suspect they do um, but that's something they could really improve upon down here you're gonna see um, the shifter which has a quick shifter so this is new in 2019 and a really great feature especially for the price point of the bike I'm not aware of any other 600 class bikes that have a quick shifter now this is up shifting only it does not have an auto blipper but still it's uh, a really great feature at this price don't know that it's totally necessary but we really like it I, I think it's cool using it my wife really likes it helps her not have to think about shifting as much when she's learning the bike. All in all, I think it's a great feature and I'm glad that Kawasaki included it. Up here in the front, you've got uh, some Nissan brakes, um, but these are dual four piston monoblocks up front. Um, these things are really strong. Uh, I noted that on the drive home. Um, I've never felt brakes this powerful on a motorcycle before. They really stop you in a hurry. And <clears throat> this is the ABS model, which employs a thing they call KIBS, which is Kawasaki Intelligent Braking System. I'm not aware of any other manufacturers who are doing that right now. And I think that's an amazingly good feature, particularly for uh, a less experienced rider like my wife. And I, I really appreciate that. And it's one of the reasons um, we had to kind of search so long and hard for this bike. It was kind of hard to find an ABS model in this color. Really good feature, especially again for the price. I can't believe how many safety features that you know Kawasaki gives you over other manufacturers and they price their bikes almost a thousand dollars lower than any other bike in this class. So really good on Kawasaki. Um, I hope they continue this trend. I really love all the features that they give at the price they offer. Up front here we have uh, dual LED headlamps and uh, another great feature. This was introduced in 2019. I think the uh, in 2017 is when the Ninja 1000 got them. The Ninja 400 has them and then the Ninja 650 went with them also. So great feature allows you to have both headlights on in both high and low beams which stops people from pulling over and telling you that you one of your headlights is out uh, it looks better it's a more white tinted light and you can see it especially in the daytime you can see it a lot better you'll notice up front here is the ram air this is kind of what gives um, this bike a lot of its extra power it's why it's faster 
are part of the reason why it's faster than the Ninja 1000. It has a ram air system that just forces air right into the air box and just gives it a lot of extra power. Above that, you've got a non-adjustable windscreen. This is the clearer stock one. We'll probably replace that with a blacked out or a smoked windscreen. I think that'll look better with the color scheme. Um, probably go with some kind of a double bubble also just to get more air up over your head when you're tucked in. So this dash was introduced, um, at least the first time I saw it was on my Ninja 650 back in 2017. I'm a huge fan of this dashboard. It is the exact same dashboard that's on the Ninja 1000. It's the exact same dashboard that's on the Ninja 400. This year they introduced an all digital LED color TFT screen on the Ninja 650 and the Ninja 1000 and I would expect that this bike will also get that treatment probably next year or the year after. I do think this design is a little bit tired and it's time for an update but it has all the information you need. It's got a gear indicator, it's got a clock, it's got your miles per hour, it's got your power modes and your traction control modes, your range, your fuel, your motor temperature. You have your selector switch. Um, this is kind of your controls for that dashboard when choosing your power modes and your traction control modes. Um, right now you can see that it's in, um, the power mode is low and the traction control mode is three. That's set up for my wife as she gets used to this bike. It has two power modes, full and low. In low power mode, you're getting about 80% of the motor. And in uh, full power mode, obviously, you're getting the full power of the motor. Uh, it's got three traction control modes. Three is the mode that intervenes the most. Um, and it's also designed for you know, slippery, rainy conditions. Power mode two is where I run the Ninja 1000. It's kind of a good balance of safety and power. And then there's traction control one, excuse me, yeah, traction control one is the least intervening and probably used for, you know, track days or whatever. You can turn it off as well. You can see on there, hopefully you can see that, it says KQS, that is the quick shifter. You can turn that on and off. Um, we have turned it on after we had about four or five hundred miles on it and that's a really great feature I've already talked about but that's you can turn it on and you see the status of it right there on the dashboard all right the fuel tank on this bad boy is four and a half gallons this thing will do about 165 to 200 miles on a tank of fuel um, as I've said in previous videos I think Kawasaki designs their fuel efficiency to hit about you know 150 to 200 miles on a tank of fuel this one's no different i think the tank looks good i like that flattened off area of the tank i think it looks really good on the bike i've talked endlessly about how i feel about the design of the ninja the body style which they all kind of basically have that same aggressive front end on them um, the real differences are toward the back and from the tank back, but they're all basically kind of the same look and I really, really enjoy it. So good on Kawasaki. I hope they continue to iterate on this design. It's a really uh, good looking bike and just great features. The price performance ratio here is off the charts. Um, I challenge you to find another motorcycle in this class that offers the same kind of safety features and gives you the same value okay guys so let's uh, hop on this bike and let's take it for a spin and i'll talk to you about my thoughts on how it rides how it performs and how it feels hey guys uh before we get into this review i gotta give a little story so this is the second time i've been recording this part of the video oh my god what a day so i got a brand new hero 7 i decided because I had some issues before I upgraded the firmware, I decided to go ahead and mount it on my handlebars. And uh, I had a little bit of a disaster this morning. So I'll, uh, I'll roll some video here on what happened exactly. Oh, it's 
still recording. Amazing. Wow. If this thing survived without a scratch, I'm gonna be so impressed. That was exciting. Hopefully this time around, it goes a little smoother. Okay guys, so the 2020 ZX6R is uh, a is no different, as far as I can tell, from the 2019 version. However, there are not that many owner reviews of the 2020, or if any, owner reviews. A lot of first rides and impressions videos. Um, but you know, here at this channel, I like to review things that we own. Not that I wouldn't do that, but I just feel like there's just more credibility when you've got an ownership stake in the vehicle. Um, probably the biggest difference between this bike and the 2018 Ninja 1000 is the seating position. Uh, you are much more leaned forward on this bike, which I think arguably is a little bit less comfortable, uh, especially for in-town riding, and I'll get to that point here in a little bit. Yeah, your, your feet are not really further back behind you, but they are higher. So in other words, your knees, your knees are up higher, closer to the tank, um, and <clears throat> it kind of forces your torso forward. The other big difference is, of course, the, <clears throat> the handlebars are slung very low, and that further forces you into kind of a tuck position. So it's not horribly uncomfortable. I, I don't find it to be bad at all unless you're doing a lot of stop and go riding in town. I think uh, that can be uncomfortable after a fairly short amount of time. But if you're just riding, you know, out uh, in the country and stuff, I think it's fine. <clears throat> you kind of have a little bit of freedom on the seat and the seat feels bigger as a result. I don't know that it actually is bigger. Um, but I can move forward and back quite easily and it ends up being quite comfortable. So just to general comfort, um, I think that the ZX6R is, I don't feel cramped on it. Um, I don't feel like it's too small of a bike. I am six foot tall, 175, 180 pounds. And I fit quite nicely on this bike. You know, and even though you're leaned forward, it's not really hard on the back at all. The, the place where you feel it is, is on your right palm, to be completely honest with you. Um, you have a little bit of freedom with your left hand, but uh, when you're holding onto the throttle for a while, your right palm, because of the extra weight that's there, it, uh, it kind of gets sore after a bit. The mirrors are set decently apart. I mean, they're adjusted for my wife right now, so. I'm not gonna mess with them because she rides the bike. And, uh, but you know, they're no better or no worse than the Ninja 650 or the Ninja 1000. The bike is uh, very quick. It's very responsive. Um, it is definitely, especially over say six, 7,000 RPMs, it is much quicker than, than the Ninja 1000. Um, I think the Ninja 1000 gets off the line faster, has more initial power, has more torque. I never really knew what that meant when I listened to people who would say, you know, the power band, this or that. But when you get over 6,000, you can really feel the power take hold of this bike. There's no waiting for power when you want to go. So, I mean, you just go 60 to 100 in a couple seconds, and it's effortless. What's really striking with this uh, bike is how well it wants to turn and how much more planted this bike feels than, say, the Ninja 1000. I really felt good uh, on the Ninja 1000. I felt like it was very nimble, and but I'm telling you, you get on a Super Sport, at least on this Super Sport, and it's amazingly different it has uh, it just turns so much better and you just don't ever feel like your wheels are gonna go out from underneath of you 
in any way. I can't really say that on the Ninja 1000. You know, you take a, go into a corner too hard with the Ninja 1000 and, and you start applying power coming out of it because it has so much torque. You're never quite sure if the wheel's gonna let go or, or whatever. With this, uh, it's very confidence inspiring. You really feel like you're planted to the ground, you feel like more part of the bike, and you just can make that turn so much easier. As I'm coming to a stop here, I'm gonna let off throttle. The engine braking is not too severe. I mean, definitely slows you down. But let's talk a little bit about um, in-town riding. Um, the reason I, brakes are a little squeaky. The reason I say that this bike is not really a good in-town bike, stop and go traffic kind of bike, um, because you're pitched so far forward on this bike, you just don't have the wind to support your torso. So when you're going over 40, 50 miles an hour, the airflow over this bike kind of holds your body up and it gives you um, a little support so there's not so much pressure on your wrists and on your particularly on your palm I'm not really finding a problem with my wrists as I am with my right palm my throttle hand um, It gets a little sore and it'll go numb after a while when you're riding, you know 30 miles an hour um, You just don't get that kind of support. It's nothing insurmountable um, But I think it's notable. I want to talk a little bit about um, safety features and um, some of the reasons we chose this particular bike. So the main ingredient on this bike is the fact that it's got ABS. Kawasaki um, has its own system and they call it KIBS. It's a Kawasaki Intelligent Braking System and what it does is it works with the engine ECU and combines that data with the ABS system, it should give you a better opportunity to stay upright when you're in a emergency situation. And I really like that, and I'm really happy to see that Kawasaki has been paying attention to that. Um, as I stated, you know, on the Ninja 1000 review, the IMU and KIB system that they have in place there works really good. Um, I really only wish that they would extend the safety features to lesser bikes. Um, I understand why they don't, because, you know, it adds cost to the bike. Well, this particular model, the 636, does not have an IMU like the ZX-10 or the Ninja 1000 has. And that's a little disappointing, because I think that's a, a great feature. Hopefully, uh, in the future, costs will come down enough that Kawasaki can start at least offering it as a option on some of these bikes. The fit and finish on this bike is really good. Um, same high standards that are in place on the Ninja 1000. You know, there are a couple notable upgrades here where they've got the Showa big piston forks, which I'm not an expert on, but you know, they're a higher quality fork. I think the brakes on this, even though they're Nissan, they're very, very strong. And uh, as I noted, when we picked up the bike, I mean, they're the strongest brakes I've ever felt on a bike. Kawasaki is uh, continuing to stick with this design. I talk about it every time I ride on one of these reviews. I think they've really got, in my opinion, the, the best looking fairings out there. And they've kind of incorporated that across their entire line of sport bike. Kawasaki has uh, really impressed me with the amount of attention to detail they give to the designs. I really think they have smart safety features in place. I think that <laughs> you just cannot beat their pricing. I mean, they're, they're a full thousand dollars less than their nearest competitor, almost across the board. See how easy those go into the turns like that? I mean, it's just amazing to me. I mean, it just dives right into the corner. It, you just feel so planted. You're never really worried about the bike coming out from underneath of you. Pretty much the only upgrade that we have left to do on this bike is to replace this windshield. I don't think my wife or I would ever ride this bike to its full potential. Making a bunch of performance uh, enhancements to it really doesn't make a lot of sense, honestly. It would only be 
um, for the sake of doing. All right, guys, let's wrap this up. So uh, I know I skipped around quite a bit on this one. Um, I don't have a, a lot of negative things to say about this bike. It is super fun to ride. I think Kawasaki did a good job with this upgrade. I would like to see the dashboard um, or the uh, instrumentation um, upgraded next year or the year after. I think that makes a lot of sense, especially given the what they've done with the 650. But outside of that, this is a really great bike. And if you're considering a 600, I think you get the most bang for your buck with the Kawasaki 636. It is a full thousand dollars or more less expensive than its nearest competitor and I really think you get a, a good value for you know if you're gonna buy a 600 anyway and I think they look great in my opinion they look the best hopefully you enjoyed this video hopefully uh, you like the new logo and introduction I will put markers in the video just so you can skip or skip around if you found this video useful or you like this video you know give me a thumbs up give us a like if you're new here consider subscribing to the channel that would really help us out a lot and hit that bell icon so you don't miss out on any future content i really enjoyed making this video guys i'm really having fun i'm starting to learn again and uh, enjoying the editing process uh, i apologize for the length of this video but I think it's necessary for a thorough review. Until next time, guys, thanks for watching.